Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. This is the next in the series from Stamp Stamperia Forest. And in the previous video, I had mentioned that I was going to show you what I did with the 8x8 size of the paper, and I forgot. So I'm going to show you at the beginning of this next video where we're putting the pockets on the back and creating the front closure. I'll show you the scoring on the 8x8 size. And this one isn't a Stamperia Forest. This is uh, Woodland Friends Collection by Graphic 45. And um, I had also mentioned that I'd picked up some of the 8x8 papers in this. And what I'm doing, even though the paper is very different, it's a similar in content. And um, I'm going to do the same essential things on the Stamperia Forest in the 8x8 that I am in the 12x12. 12 12, and also the same with the Woodland Friends Collection. So let me show you how I made these with the 8x8 papers and the measurements that I used for those. And then we'll go on to how to put the pockets on the back and the closure on the front. For the 8x8 papers, I used, I used uh, these measurements. And my first one, the image that you want on the outside is face down. And this first score is at two and one eighths. So I scored it at, on the eight by eight paper at two and one eighth. And then I fold it and I know with the it's the hills and valleys and the fold thing, but this still works. So I scored it at two and an eighth and I folded it. And then um, I scored it again at three and a half and three and three quarters. And that makes the the uh, you know the the one quarter inch allowance I guess that's a good way to put it the one quarter inch allowance on the on the top so scored there and there and then I turned it on its side and I scored again at seven and a half and then I flipped it around 180 and I scored at seven and a half. Again, you can score at the half inch mark if that's easier for you. This is just what I find that I like. All right, so those are all the score marks and we're not using that for the other piece, I don't think. Well, maybe we will, but I'm gonna put it away out of the way anyway. And corner round, sorry, I forgot to grab that. Corner round, uh, I used the quarter inch corner round on the four corners. You know, no, that's wrong. Don't 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 do that part yet because I have to cut out, I have to cut out the little pieces, right? So, don't score yet. Um, let's try that again. Yes, score. Don't punch. Corner around the the corners yet. All right. S folding these down so that it's just I'm folding them where I scored them just so it's easier to see. And I told myself. On the previous video that I shared yesterday, I told myself I wasn't going to read those comments yet because um, I didn't want it to influence this video. But I read the comments and I commented and, and um, loved and such. And wow, just just wow. You guys are amazing. And uh, Shelly, the person who sent me the original message um, about a reality check, had um, mentioned today or well yesterday afternoon after I'd posted the video that she saw the idea or she got the idea from um Anna at Pink Monarch Pink Monarch Studios Pink Monarch Prints Anna she got it from Anna so um please be sure and, and see Anna's video too all right so you cut out the four corners just like you do on the um the larger size the 12 by 12 Am I even remotely in frame? Okay, I didn't look. Sorry, I sat down and then forgot to look. But you do the same same essential thing. You use the folds that you created to guide your cuts. And then I'll put these aside and save them for the pieces that are going to go inside. Okay, cut out the four corners. And again, I'll toss those in a, a bag and save them. Um, that creates this, this envelope piece, right? And then I round the corners with, and I use the quarter inch though, you can certainly use any. And the little We Are Memory Keepers corner chomper works just fine for this. All right, all four of those. Um, next up, I cut the corners of these two just because it folds a little bit more nicely. 
and those scraps I don't keep. Though you certainly could if you've got a creative way to use those scraps. That's fabulous. Okay, it's early still, and even though I've been up for a while, I've been doing schoolwork, so I'm, I'm changing my mental brain to crafting, paper crafting, and I hope to spend some time in here today. Okay, so this is the base of the envelope that's going to be sewn into the signature of the book, and then inked, because I like to ink, and then I put these closures on. Now, when I did the flip through of flips, flaps, and folds, I show I said I would share a way to add these string holders as a closure without having to go through the page, and and I'll show you that. But on these, I I don't mind that it's showing because I'm going to cover it, and um, I didn't mind that it went through the page. It just made it more sturdy, and this is going to be. An essential piece to take in and out of the uh, the inserts in and out of the pocket. So I wanted it really sturdy and really strong as a closure, and I'll show you how to do that, how I did that. Now uh, you can use a crop dial or you can use a hole punch and you can use um, different systems to do this. I have a spring loaded system that's really loud, so I apologize, but um, I'll show how I do it. The first thing I do is. Um, once I've got the envelope closed, I make sure that I have the outer piece on top. You know, the piece that I want on the outside, I have it on top. And I make sure that my um, the spine that I've created is mostly straight so that the lines are, you know, mostly straight up and down. And then I use, um, and I didn't pull that out, a one-inch ruler. And I've got a couple different sizes, but I, I usually use the small one simply because it's easy. Nope, not on this one. You can't use the small one. But I use a one-inch ruler to make my um, pencil marks. And let me find the one I like to use. I, it, You know, it's a ruler is a ruler, but they're clear. And I like to use this one simply because it makes it easy for me to see. So I'll, this is a one-inch wide ruler. And I'll use the half-inch mark and line it up on the top edge. So remember, I've got my quarter-inch quarter inch seam here. So this will be the piece on the top. And when I'm putting the marks that I need in place, I make sure that I have that on the top. Then I measure from the bottom and this is seven inches. So at three and a half inches, I will, maybe you can see that a little better. So I'll line the center, the half inch mark up on the edge of the outside piece, right? And then I'll lay it down like so. And then because it's seven inches, I'll mark it at three and a half. And that's essentially the halfway point. And that is where I'm going to put the two the two closure holders. So again, make sure it's straight. Make sure it's on the line. And then at three and a half, I'll make two, two marks. And that's where I put the... Okay, they're going to be covered. But I don't know how well you can see them. But that's where those... Those two marks are where I'm going to put, or I'm going to glue the um, the holders. Now, before I put the holders, no, that's right. I do the holders in place first. Sorry. What I do to make these is the this is um, I used different sizes. I the for the larger journals I used the three quarter inch circle punch, and for this one I think this one is a five eighths inch circle punch. And then this little itty bitty one, or it's not even really itty bitty, is a half inch circle punch. And so when I made these closures for this book, I did it one way, but when I made it for the other piece, I did it like this. So I've got my top piece and the way I created my top piece is I just punched several of these circles and I stacked them and glued them together. And when I glued them, I went around in a circle like this to make sure that they were lined up, all right? When it was dry, I inked the edges. But when I glue these, I glue them together like I'll put the glue around the outside edge because the, the center is where I'm going to be punching the hole for the brad or the eyelet, whichever you choose to use. So when I glue them together, I put the glue on the outside edge so they stay together. But when you're putting them on your book, you don't want to glue the outside edge when you're like... For this particular piece, when I glue it on here, I don't want glue on the outside edge because I want to be able to put string underneath that. So that's when I don't glue the outside edge. When I'm stacking them to create enough dimension, 
I glue on the outside edge and leave the center where I'm going to poke the hole alone. I don't put glue there. But I do the opposite when I'm at attaching it to my book because I don't want glue on the outside edge. That's where I want the lift to put the string. Okay, so attaching them to this book looks a little different than attaching them without the hole in the back. So in order to do it where your whole closure piece is sitting on top and doesn't have to go through your page, this is the way I did it. So I did the same thing. I created, um, I punched several circles in the cardstock that I wanted and attached those, gluing the outside edge, stacking, outside edge, stack, outside edge, stack. That's how I created it. And then I punched a thicker piece, like this is chipboard. Maybe you can see that. I punched a thicker piece in a smaller size. This is smaller circle punch. And for this size, I'd actually use a smaller one still, but I left it so that you could see. So it's smaller. And then I glue it again on the outside edge to the back here to create lift. If you can find this frame there, if you can see it, to create lift. Then, once this piece is glued, I would, well, with the ink on the top, of course. Once this piece is glued, I would mark a center, a pencil mark in the center, and I just put my pencil down. Um, well, I thought I put my pencil down. Oh, here it is. And I don't, I make the pencil mark for a couple reasons. One, when you've got, like if you're holding this and you're punching it with your crocodile, or if you're using the spring-loaded like I do, um, it's harder to see when you've got something there. So I make a pencil mark just, and, it, and I don't measure this one. I just kind of make it about the middle, eh, close enough. All right. Then I'll glue this piece again because it's smaller, this, this layer that I'm adding. I'll glue around the outside edge and I'll put this on top. And I'll punch through both. I'll, I'll use my punch tool to punch through both. And then I'll put my brad or eyelet here, right? And I've got a gap between the two. And then I'll use, sorry, if I got my head in the camera, I apologize. Um, I'll use another single circle underneath it so that I've got space between the top and the bottom circle. All right, so I'm not putting the punch through this one, or the bottom one. I'm only putting the punch through the sandwich I made at top with the, the, the chipboard circle, or the cardstock circles and the chipboard circle. Punch through there and then my brad or my eyelet, whatever I'm doing. And then when I've got that dimension with space between them, I'll glue that piece onto the bottom piece, that anchor piece. When this whole sandwich is dry, I will put it, I'll glue it on top here. That gives me the space for my string to go around without requiring that I poke it through the, the, the envelope flap. That's what I did with the um, flips, flaps, and folds sample that I made in the back. And I, that's what I was telling you I would show you. So that's how I did it without creating the hole here. Now, for like I said, for these, I don't need this space because... I am going to put this in place through the page, and so I'll have the back of the paper as my place to put the string around. Maybe that was confusing, but, but I sort of understood it. So this piece, the single layer that um, I used on the top only closure will go underneath at the bottom. So if you want to, and I didn't do it on these, but you can, I mean, this is a fairly clean punch, and sometimes when you crop, when you use a crocodile, you get it smooshed. Well, the flower-edged spring spreader that I use creates these little divots, and so the back usually looks pretty good. And then I don't have to do that next step with covering up the back with a circle with a, uh, a circle punch. But if you choose to, you certainly can. Same idea because your string is gonna go around here on the front because you haven't glued that down and it's held in place with the brad or the eyelet and um, the back can or cannot be covered, up to you. All right, a lot of talking, let's get to working. All right, these, again, I created a sandwich or a layer, not a sandwich on this one, a, a layer of stacked chipboard. I'll learn to speak, I apologize. I created a layer of stacked cardstock to make this thick enough to be nice and sturdy because it's going to hold a lot. And now I don't want the edges glued down. I only want the center glued down and I only want it glued down to hold it in place while I, um, while I punch the hole. 
So I just put a little dot of glue on the back like that, and I put it down about in the center of the mark I made on my paper. And then I'll let that hold for a second, and I do the same thing with the other one. I had already created these. Um, see, these are single layers. I don't know how well you can see that. These are single layers of cardstock. And these, this is, I don't know, maybe three layers. Well, if I can get it out. This is three layers of cardstock. And again, I don't know how well it'll show up on camera, but it's thicker and it's sturdier, and which is what I want because it's it's got a tough job to, um, oh, I guess I inked both sides of this one. It's got a tough job to hold the closure in place with it when it inserts in it. And again, I'm not gonna circ glue around the outside. I just wanna glue the inside because even though that's gonna be the area that I punch, I wanna be able to put the string in here. All right, so then I lay this down. I look where my dot is that I've marked and I kind of eyeball it to make sure that they're straight. So this is straight. There's enough of a gap this can open and close and I will hold them down until they're mostly dry. Then, and I apologize for the noise in advance, um, talk about, well, here, I'll let you look at these while I'm going and punching that. This is a glass mat and it's even louder when I do it on the glass mat. So I moved it out of, I'm moving it to the side where there's no glass on it. But here are the dimensions. Here are the scoring dimensions if you wanna look at those. So I will punch this and it'll be loud and I'm sorry. And then we'll move back on. Um, this is the, the there's, well, it comes with one tool, but I, I bought two of them over the years. And these are, I don't even know if they're still available. It's called a ready set tool. It's uh, 25 or more years old. And I, like I said, I bought two of them. This is the one that pokes the hole. So like if you're going farther back, then you can make a hole with your with your um, crocodile or your circle punch. This makes the hole and it's an anywhere punch. And this is the one that sets it. It's kind of got, there's three different tips that I have and it's got a flower type. It creates a flower type opening. It spreads the brad in a flower type opening. And so I'm gonna make the hole first. And sometimes because this is, remember I made this a thick, thick cardstock and it's on top of cardstock. So it's, um, it might take a couple springs and I just really hope that doesn't translate too insanely loud on the video. And you know what I forgot to do? Ah, oh, I forgot to punt, I put um, my microphone on. Dang, now that, okay, if you couldn't hear me, I'm sorry, I'm gonna switch and plug in the microphone now. Grr, I don't have any more of the paper to start over again, otherwise I would. Ugh. See what happens when I try to do too many things at once. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, microphone on, microphone in. I sure hope it works better now. I apologize. Okay, um, punched those holes. Poking them out so you can see. And I didn't do it perfectly because, you know, I was talking and, and doing too many things at once. And so punched out those holes. Uh, where did it go? This tool created those holes. And um, because like on this one, it's too far back for my crocodile. I have the long arm crocodile, but honestly, I don't love it because it's really hard to see exactly where you want to punch. And if you want your hole to be in a perfect spot, I find it more difficult to use. Okay, so holes. And now I'm using eyelets. You could certainly use brads. At least I think I'm using eyelets. I put them in here. And then, oh, there's Oliver. Um, I'm going to go set this. Oliver is our orange kitty and he wants to come craft with me but oh my goodness. Okay see so that is what this looks like when I'm done. It spreads it like a flower and that's why I like it. Okay and I'll do the other one and then we'll be all done with the loud noises and again I apologize if this is insanely loud. Done and done. So that that is the these are the dimensions eight by eight score at two and an eighth fold it score at three and a half and three and a quarter and then cut the four corners off on that flip it to the side and then score at seven and a half and two and that is this one okay i will m move these aside when one two three four five yeah those are the five for this and then when i'm all said and done i ink all the edges because i like ink Edge, inked edges if, if you're not an inked edge 
for something, then skip that step. Okay, putting that away because I don't work well in a mess. I will give you the dimensions for these, for the um, the pockets for the eight by eight pages. And um, I think, what order did I do them? Shoot, this one was the last one. I had them, see I had them stacked and I need to stack them back the way they were so that I knew the order. All right, five papers, five pockets. These are just the ones I chose. I chose this first paper, a bunny, it's a cute bunny paper because um, I love Gail Agostinelli and she loves bunnies and seeing bunnies makes me think of her and it's got teal in here and she loves teal and pink and I think she said those are her favorite color combinations or maybe I made that up but I think she did. So here is the completed envelope. It's got the Tyvek. It's got the flaps so that I can glue this down on the flap after I put my pockets on after I sew it into my signature and then I'll loop a piece of string around here to tie it closed and then we'll put whatever type of inserts like writing inserts or photo inserts and memorabilia inserts and I'll, I'll show you a variety of kinds inside here. Okay so this was this is uh, page one and to do this pocket it mimics the pocket on uh, my in frame there mimics the pocket on the 12 by 12 album. I just changed the dimensions to fit this more well, it's not really a traveler's notebook, but more traveler's notebook size. These 8x8 papers I did not cut down. I did cut down the 12x12. 12 12. Okay, so anyway, this piece of coffee dyed tracing paper. And to do this, I literally just grabbed a stack of coffee dyed tracing paper. And I used my scraps first. And then I just kind of did it. This one is 7x4 inches. And then I scored it at 2.5 to fold it over. And like with the other book, I on this one, I did not want... There's a tuck in the back, so it's free floating tuck all the way. Um, and then a pocket back here. And I didn't want, I wanted this pocket, this top pocket, to overlap this. So the whole back is open. This is open to here, and then there's a pocket on front. So it's a little bit different, but I altered all of them because I can't do them all exactly the same. So pocket number one for page number one, if you're following the order, is seven by four, scored at two and a half. And then just whichever image you want. I chose this one simply because I thought the bunny went well with the bunnies. All right, so that was page one. Page two um, is just this flip up one, and I'll put a writing pad here when we're ready to do this point or this this part. And it's also got, it's, so it's a tuck spot, tuck spot, a pocket, oops, a pocket, and it will have a writing spot. And the measurements for this one are five inches wide and three and a half inches tall. And then you, when it's up at the five inch, I score, scored and folded it at three and a half inches because that's the width and that gives you the length, the, the width of the page, but it also created the pocket on the front. So five and three and a half for page two, or pocket two, I should say. Um, page or pocket number three. The others all have critters on the front, but this one was just floral, which is why I stuck it in the middle, just for balance. Some of the others have critter, critters and flowers, but this one was just flowers. Um, this one is two and a half inches wide by seven inches tall, and this is the belly band one. But this belly band isn't a complete belly band because I decided to change it up a little bit. It's a be complete belly band at the top and a complete belly band at the top bottom, but I wanted this pocket to be kind of an anchor. So you've got the full belly band up here and it down at the bottom and then this part it stops because of I sewed the pocket on and there is a pocket at the top and then a pocket at the side and I just used two of the little images on the cutouts on the paper for that two and a half and seven and then I just sewed the paper okay so that's pocket number three or not pocket number three envelope number three envelope number four oh friggin where did I oh here it is good it fell off Okay, envelope number four, I couldn't fold it as many times and still show the images because it's so much narrower. So this one has, I believe, seven pockets. It has a full pocket in the back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this one's got seven pockets, which is still pretty good real estate when you consider for the size paper. And this one is seven inches tall and five and a half inches wide. And then I scored it at two and a half inches and I scored it at four and a quarter inches. And before I put it onto the envelope, I sewed it at two and a quarter, and then I flipped it around and sewed it at two and a quarter. So that made these, these smaller pockets on the top. It still allowed me to, 
to have the full pocket in the back. And then once those were sewn, then I sewed this piece on. All right, so that is envelope four. And then for envelope five, I had to use squirrel because I do that and I do it a lot. And I try not to, but there you go. There's my reality. So squirrel paper. And for this one, it's the side tuck with um, a pocket on top of the side tuck and then a side pocket on the side. And there's a cute little squirrel that says explore. This pocket is a little bit shorter because I couldn't cover up his sweet face. I just couldn't make myself do it. And I find that when I'm doing this, depending on which papers I'm using, I have to alter the pockets a little bit to make it work for what I'm creating. I knew what I forgot. I forgot to bring over my sewing machine, but that's okay. That's an easy quick fix. So for this particular one, it is, this pocket was seven inches long like the others and then two and three quarter inches wide. And I'll show you when I show you the big ones, how I made it. I um, fold a little bit up at the top down to, it was about a half an inch or so, to make the top piece a little bit sturdier. And then I took the bottom and folded it up. So I just folded the top under and the bottom up and sewed it in place to put it on to here. And so that's pocket number five for the eight and a half, or the eight by eight size. All right. What we're going to focus on today and i probably took a really long time for that part so my apologies there but um i didn't cover it earlier you know shoot maybe maybe i don't make this so long so that's the eight by eight i'm going to stop here and i am going to do another video right after this one so that if you only want one piece or the other piece you don't have to watch such a long video i think that's what i'm going to do but before i do that before i go a couple things people asked after the um reality check challenge the reality check challenge wasn't my idea my friend shelly is the one who sent me a message and she said she was the one who initiated it. but she got the concept or the idea from anna at pink monarch prints i mean it was something that paralleled what she was going through so Anna at Pink Monarch Prints or Pink Monarch Studios. I don't remember why I can't remember it, but Anna's fabulous. And then a couple people on my um, video said that they wanted to do the challenge, the reality check challenge. And I love that. I love that because supporting each other in a real format, in a real way, is just, it's what I'm all about. Anyway, Wandering Angel Studio, I Stamp C, Kathleen Mower, Mower, Mower. But it's got to be Mower because the bossy E makes the O say its name. Kathleen Mower, uh, Suet Paper Inspirations, and possibly, and I've got these names in there because I wasn't sure if they were going to do the talons or not, but if they did, I want you to be able to see them. Maxie Michelle, and she has two eyes on her name, I believe, and then Woodland Inspired. It varying degrees indicated that they would take part in the challenge. And if you're a YouTuber and you're watching this, please feel free to take part in the challenge. Ugly, messy, realistic, it's beautiful, and um, it's just kind of... You know, it's good to have that reality check in every once in a while. All right, so enough about that. Thank you very much for watching this video. In the next video, I'm just going to do, and I'll have it set up with my sewing machine here. I'm just going to do the pockets on the 12 by 12. I gave you the dimensions for the pockets on the 8 by 8, but I'll show you how I assembled them with the 12 by 12. All right, thank you for watching and happy creating.